Dr. Tom Roselle live right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Stephanie Pina, and I'm sitting in for Dr. Tom Rizal, and I'm in here in studio with Dr. Poe, and today we're going to be talking about some topics for your health and also things that are related to natural medicine and giving you more options to be uh, more informed of what you can do to make changes in your health. Welcome, Dr. Poe. Hello. Thank you. I know there's a lot of information out there about autoimmune diseases, but first of all, let's talk about what is an autoimmune disease and why are we seeing the prevalence of these diseases popping up more and more each year? You're right. We're seeing it a lot more now. Um, it, it's something that we're starting to associate a lot more diseases now with it than we previously used to. Um, diseases like type 1 diabetes and, and really some of the adult type 2 diabetes that we see, which we know is very, very prevalent. But what an autoimmune disease basically is, is when the immune system starts to turn against the host and the immune system starts to attack your own tissues. Um, instead of looking at the body tissue normally, um, the immune system starts to see it as any kind of antigen. It, it doesn't differentiate your, let's say, for example, your uh, heart tissue as anything different than a bacteria. So the immune system goes after it, it tries to attack it and destroy it and break it down, and you get destruction of your own tissues. Of course, over time, that's a segue into lots of chronic problems. So essentially, the body is really kind of seeing itself as a problem and going after itself instead of attacking exactly. anything else that it should be attacking. Yeah, exactly. Is it going after certain people? What's the prevalence of that? No, right. And, and so let's talk about a couple different types of autoimmune disease. And really, there's, there's lots of them out there. And when we start to try to name these diseases, you have to remember, and this is the big thing that I try to really have patients understand, is that when you talk about autoimmune disease, this is really a problem with the immune system. But when we label these diseases, we call them things like Hashimoto's disease, which is autoimmune of the thyroid, or multiple sclerosis, which is autoimmune of the, the fat that covers the nerves, or uh, rheumatoid arthritis, which is where the immune system is attacking the, the joint tissue. So we name these diseases after the target tissue, but the mechanics behind all those diseases is still the same. It's that the immune system has gotten to a place where it's no longer well-regulated, and now it's going after your body's tissues and destroying it in different places. So a lot of the typical diseases we see, and I have a lot of thyroid patients. I, I, I did a electro on thyroid disease uh, last year. I'll do it again later on this year. But you've got to remember that statistically, and this is not my statistic, this is you know endocrinology statistics, uh, 90% of the time if you're hypothyroid, it's actually autoimmune. It's, it's Hashimoto's disease. Now they're saying I think it's, it's almost up to like a third of adults that have been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. It's not true type 2 diabetes. It's actually that type 1.5 that we talk about, which is actually autoimmune. Your immune system is now attacking the pancreas or different enzymes or parts of the pancreas, and that's why you're getting a lower production of insulin. So I know when we talk about this and we have, you know, autoimmune diseases tend to be more chronic, long care type of situations where essentially even the diagnosis in itself can be very difficult because a lot of those diseases can look very similar, like looking at even comparing something like a you know chronic fatigue syndrome to something like lupus or other autoimmune diseases, they tend to get mixed in the shuffle because they don't really fall into one category or they can get their tests become positive for one thing versus the other. Have you seen any trends that basically are happening as far as the diagnostics of it or what people are doing to kind of help prevent it as well using you know natural medicine? Diagnosis is getting better for it, but we still have these kind of mystery diseases where people get pegged with things like fibromyalgia, which is basically you have pain, we don't know why, so... We're going to call it fibromyalgia. Um, it's just an easy way to give a label so that we can administer some sort of care, which almost without a doubt is going to be steroids. Within mainstream medicine, that's going to be the treatment. You're going to go to a rheumatologist and you're going to get steroids. The reason why they do that is because there's inflammation involved. When we talk about the immune system, we're talking about inflammation, and that's what happens with the mechanics behind autoimmune. Um, unfortunately, ultimately, in the end, the steroids are going to make the autoimmune disease much, much worse. So they don't do anything to fix, they bring down some of the inflammation, but they don't do anything to fix the mechanics behind, well, why are you getting the inflammation? Why is the immune system so dysregulated? Why is it attacking tissue? And those are the pieces you have to go after. Unfortunately, for the medical profession, you can't do that with pharmaceuticals. There's no way to treat it that way. But you can treat it with you know, real basic nutrition. Um, you can treat it with different kinds of nutrients. It's a, There's real simple ways to balance it, but that's just not part of the mainstream treatment for it. 
You also talk a lot uh, to each one of the patients about the effect that the gut has and the way nutrition can actually affect the body, too. And I know a lot of the immune system factors are actually in the gut to begin with. Now, when we hear things about leaky gut and stuff, how does that connect into autoimmune disease and like kind of what you can do for it and how would it even uh, make things worse? And that's kind of what we talked about last week a little bit when uh, Sue and I were on the program and we started talking about gluten allergies. What I really see in practice is that that gluten allergy, or not even if you have the allergy, just the gluten intolerance and just the way gluten has changed when we're on a high wheat diet like that, it causes that leaky gut syndrome. It causes the breakdown of the gut. Essentially what leaky gut syndrome is, and I'm going to talk about it in more detail uh, this week when uh, I do a lecture on Wednesday on autoimmune. When we talk about that, I'll explain a little bit more, but essentially you're getting a breakdown of the intestinal tract where the junctions between the individual cell walls start to open up and you actually start to leak contents from the inside of your intestinal tract into the body. Now, the reason why that becomes a problem and becomes devastating is because the contents that are inside the intestinal tract shouldn't be inside the body, and the immune system knows this. And so when it looks at these things that are leaking in, it looks at them as a pathogen. This is something that shouldn't be there. It's a foreign invader. It it just shouldn't be there. So let's go after it. You know, let's make antibodies to it, which is essentially when you start to form memories to it and, you know, memories within the immune system so that you can destroy it again if you see it again. And let's make memories and then let's destroy it. The problem is that a lot of the proteins that we consume in foods will look like proteins within our own bodies. And that's when, if the immune system is constantly upregulated because you constantly have things leaking out of the gut in your system, or you've got constant other infections, or you've got chronic stress, or you've got constant um, toxic exposures to different things, when that immune system is constantly upregulated like that, that's when it can kind of have this little whoops, it mistakes your tissue for that tissue, and now it starts attacking your own tissue. The uh, big notorious one that they always talk about is things like cow's milk. The protein of cow's milk will look a lot like pancreatic tissue. It looks a lot like cardiac tissue. So you can have this cross-reactivity to where now it starts attacking the pancreas and you've got a child with you know, uh, type 1 diabetes. Dr. Leno Poe is going to be talking all about autoimmune diseases and some of the natural ways that we've kind of dealt with them in the past and what's also coming up in the future. And that's going to be this Wednesday, um, May the 30th, at the Roselle Center for Healing at 7.30 p.m. If you are interested in hearing what he has to say about autoimmune diseases and also any other questions, you can give the office a call to pre-register. That number is 703-698-7117. And spaces are limited, so we just want to know who's coming ahead of time. And you can hear um, some more information about the autoimmune diseases and what natural memories we've used at the Roselle Center to basically help treat that as well. Tell me a little bit about who's the most affected by this. Is there a certain age group or gender that you're seeing come into, you know, with questions either on autoimmune disease or they're getting diagnosed more often? No, unfortunately, patients are not get. I wouldn't say that patients are getting diagnosed more often. Um, the problem with that is that since there's no real way to treat it, Often we, we don't even look for it. Take uh, thyroid, for example. I'll use thyroid a lot because I treat a lot of thyroid patients. Almost never do patients come in where they've had their thyroid antibodies checked before. You just rarely see it. If you're hypothyroid, probably the only thing you've ever had checked is TSH and, and T4, maybe, maybe T3, and that's probably about it. But it's just TSH and T4 because the reality is, from that perspective, there's no other way to treat it. Um, whether you've got Hashimoto's disease or you've got just underfunctioning thyroid, they're going to treat the same way. You're going to get put on either Synthroid or, or uh, Levothyroxine or one of the other T4 drugs, and, and that's going to be it. So we don't really see the diagnosis as much because why bother diagnosis if we're, we don't have any way to really treat it? Right, and I think that's a lot of times when we see patients in the clinic too, they come in frustrated because there is no straight diagnosis and they don't have those answers for them already, so they're wondering why they keep getting sicker and sicker. And right. Every time they do try one drug or another drug, they're just not feeling any better because it's not really getting to the root cause of what's really going on And with they don't them. even realize that what they have is actually an autoimmune disease. Right. Well, we know that about 23.5 million Americans have been diagnosed with autoimmune diseases and chronic diseases, which is a lot more than actually are diagnosed each year with cancer and, and heart disease as well. So it's a major, major issue out there. So hopefully you can come join Dr. Poe and learn some more information 
on Wednesday night when he goes over this and gives you some great information about what we do and also what can be done um, in the role of autoimmune diseases. So welcome back to the Tom Rizal live show. And we're here in studio and I'm talking with Dr. Leonard Poe about autoimmune diseases. And he's going to be your presenter this Wednesday night, May the 30th at 730 at the Rizal Center for Healing located off of Arlington Boulevard in Fairfax, Virginia. And we're going to be talking about autoimmune diseases and everything that you can do uh, and understanding them better. If you're interested in attending that, make sure you give the office a call, 703-698-7117. And Dr. Poe, tell me a little bit about when someone first comes into the office, what are they really looking at when, they, when they're coming in with autoimmune diseases? Are they coming in with lab work? Are they coming in? How are they getting diagnosed ahead of time and what are they doing at the office? Most of the time, no. There's not a good presenting diagnosis already. Uh, we do have lots of patients that come in that already know. Like I've been, I've been diagnosed with uh, MS, or I've been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. You know, sometimes they they do know, um, but off, more often than not, no. Um, and that's why they're ending up at our office. Um, we've got some sort of mystery. We're not doing well, and and we can't figure out why. And I'm not getting any help anywhere. Um, so we do see an awful lot of those patients, but. Typically, no, and autoimmune disease can be difficult to diagnose. The reason why is that you're trying to, essentially what you're looking for, and like I said, a lot of times there's just no interest in doing it depending on you know, who the practitioner is because they can't treat it anyway, so why bother diagnosing something I can't treat? Um, but one of the problems is, is that sometimes it's hard to find those antibodies in the blood, and this comes back to the conversation, part of the conversation you and I had what, two weeks ago with mm-hmm. Dr. Rozelle on the radio when we talked about allergies. And we talked about how there's different kinds of antibodies out there. And essentially, antibodies are a part of the immune system. Um, there's different kinds of, you know, when we talk about the immune system, just like when we talk about allergies, uh, it, it's a complex system. I mean, it is a very, very complex system. Um, you know, we always kind of dummy it down into, this is the immune system and it keeps you from getting sick. But there's, there's lots of different working parts to it. And like any other system in the body, not all the parts are on at the same time, and they can't be on at the same time. It's a, it's a constant balance back and forth. So when we talk about trying to diagnose it, well, we've got to find out, was the body making antibodies to a specific tissue? And this is where you've got to look at it, the patient, and you've got to see, try to figure out, well, okay, which tissue do I think is being affected? You know, a lot of times it's easy when you've got hypothyroidism. Well, you want to check antibodies for the thyroid, obviously. But when we have things like fibromyalgia, for example, well, that can be a little bit more difficult because well, now we got to figure out which tissue might this be attacking. And you've got to try to figure out all the different tissues that might be getting attacked at the time. The problem with it, and this is where it's hard to diagnose it, is that if the immune system is depleted, if that part of the immune system that makes antibodies is depleted, and we'll talk later on a little bit more about Th1, Th2 balance, if the immune system is depleted and it's just not making antibodies in real high, you know, what would look at like pathogenic numbers on, on lab reports, then you come up with a false negative. And you see those false negatives a lot. If you've ever done blood work and you've looked at antibodies and you've done like an RA panel and it's ever come up positive ever, then you have an autoimmune disease, even if it comes up negative later on in, in further exams. And I, I've had patients say that, well, they thought I had it once because it came out negative, but I did another blood test and it was, you know, it was, or it came up positive one time. I did another blood test and it came up negative. Well, anytime you ever see a positive for any kind of tissue antibodies, you have an, an autoimmune disease. It hasn't gone away. It will never go away. So, but for some people, they do that test initially and it comes back negative and well, it's never checked again. Well, if the immune system's depleted, it just might not show up. And that's the problem that a lot of patients run into. And that's why sometimes it's very difficult. Sometimes you have to check that, you know, you have to work on bringing the immune system up and really upregulating, and then you see it come up in the bloodstream. And it's not because you're getting sicker, it's just because now it actually shows up. So really it's it's coming up and using some of those lab tests to come up with that diagnosis instead of really figuring out what's going on with the body itself and how is the body responding to whether it's an inflammatory process or an allergy process or if it's really something else going on as well. Yeah, you still, you still look at it the same way. You know, well, the person's inflamed. You know, there, there's, there's obvious systemic inflammation. You know, we obviously have poor 
function going on here in in some regard and you look at that it's just it's a matter of figuring out is this a problem with the immune system or is this just poorly functioning physiology and that's where it's sometimes it's hard to to find that piece um but you know some of this comes back to if it looks like a duck and it walks like a duck and sounds well you know it probably is a duck and when you start to see well you got multiple problems with the immune system and then you've got this strange kind of disease that we really can't pin down uh, you know what? That's probably autoimmune. Or if you have a known thing like MS. Well, I know there's been some interest too on like how it all gets started, and we've talked quite a bit about you know how diet and lifestyle and everything basically can affect our immune system and how we respond to things. And there was one theory out there that has to deal particularly with the autoimmune diseases, whether or not some kind of exposure to either like a cold or a flu virus really starts as the big trigger that gets things going, or even some of the chemicals that were exposed to on a daily basis now, whether it's car fumes or from, you know, things that we pick up from where we're working and stuff like that. But what do you think as far as when people say, you know, I've come in and I'm having these symptoms, whether it's a headache or joint inflammation and stuff, and it all started ever since this one start, is there usually a connection that you can kind of tie things back to, or is it still vague enough that it's it's even hard to put a tie on when, when autoimmune diseases or any kind of disease for that matter starts? No, it, it, it's hard. Because this is something that, you know, it's a growing problem within the immune system. And it usually, it doesn't manifest right away. It's not like, uh, you know, you made those antibodies today and tomorrow you've got all this symptomatology screaming at you saying, oh, I've got a problem. Um, you know, it's, it's you know, I look at autoimmune disease kind of the same way as cancer. Um, and trying to go back and pick some sort of single event or it was this exposure or that you know, it, it's impossible. It's like asking why do people get cancer? I mean, there's no way to, there's there's literally, I mean, millions of, of different kinds of exposures you can have, you know, whether you're talking about industrial chemical exposures, uh, vaccines, uh, you know, the food, you know, not really food, but the products that we eat. I mean, it's, it's one of the, it's, you know, it's like a bucket and eventually it's going to get filled up. And once it gets filled up and spills over, you've got a disease. Um, up until then, I mean, it's just, it's a growing problem. But, you know, a lot of it, I mean, they really are tying in being more so with the gut than anything else. Um, and that with the, you know, we talked about the leaky gut syndrome a little bit with that gut breakdown and that mucosal breakdown, um, not just in the gut, but also in the brain. And that's why we see a lot of these neurological disorders that we know are autoimmune now. Um, it's a breakdown of that system. Well, we know that also when it comes to conventional treatment of autoimmune diseases, you know, a lot of those drugs are basically dealing with inflammation responses. And, and unfortunately, they're turning down the immune system in order so it doesn't have that body response where it's attacking our own cells. You know, our, we're seeing more and more trends of them being developed, but in certain aspects of it, they're kind of the repeats of the same old things every single time. Right, and that's that's disease management. I mean, that's you're, you're managing the symptomatology, but there's there's nothing there in regard to getting at well, what can I do to actually balance the immune system so that it stops attacking my tissue as often as it is right now, and that's really the difference. And that's what we're going to talk about Wednesday is well, what can you actually do. You know, not just manage the symptomatology as it comes along and make it worse in the long run, but are there things you can do to actually balance the immune system, get it working properly again for you? doesn't mean you'll never have attacks again against your own tissue, but you can get it down to a place where it's very asymptomatic and you can greatly improve quality of life. And that's the big thing with it is improving that quality of life. Welcome back to the Dr. Tom Rizal Live Show. I'm in studio here with Dr. Leonard Poe, and we're talking about autoimmune diseases, and he's going to be presenting on that this Wednesday, May 30th at 7.30 p.m. And if you're interested in basically coming and attending that show, you want to call up our office at 703-698-7117. And actually, while you are calling them to register for that program, you might as well also ask about um, Ageless Health 2012. It's the How to Live Well and Prosper in a Stressful World. That's going to be in Falls Church, and that's going to be October 20th. And my, both myself and Dr. Poe have done this a couple of times, and I know it's a very informative day where you get to learn a lot about all the presenters that you hear here on the radio, including Dr. Rizal, who happens to be probably on his way back from China right now. Um, but essentially, he may it's, even be listening now. Yeah, he might be listening, going, "Great, this is the last time I'm going to have them do this." <laughs> but uh, essentially. 
tell us a little bit about uh, Ageless Health real quick, Dr. Poe, from your perspective. I've been doing it for so many years now, but what's the what does everyone expect when they go there? It's uh, I'll tell you what, it's it's a fun day. It's a lot of information. Um, a whole lot of information. So, you know, bring, bring your thinking cap along for that one. Um, but, you know, it's a day where we, we really look at the body from several different angles. You know, we always talk about the triad of health and we talk about the structural side of things, the biochemical side, the emotional, mental stress side and how well you're adapting to it. Um, so when we go through that day and we talk about different, essentially different facets of the body and how it works and how things in your everyday life affect you for good or bad, it's coming from those three different perspectives. And, you know, there, there's always some some confusion about what we mean by when we say ageless health. Uh, we're not saying that you'll never age because everybody ages, but that your health can be ageless. And that's really what it's about. It's maintaining your quality of life as, as long as you want to maintain it. Um, but it's, you know, it's all the little things on a daily basis. And sometimes it seems like we're nitpicking about things, you know, ah, don't drink out of plastic bottles and don't, you know, but it's, it's all the little things that you can control. And that's really what's because there's, believe me, there's a million and one different things that you can control. And, uh, the ones you can, you know, those are the ones we want you to go after and, and take charge of because health is ultimately in your hands. And the better educated you are about, you know, how the body works and, and, and what things affect it, you know, the, the better health decisions you can make. And that's what that day is really about is, is just getting a lot of information to you, um, a lot of the new health trends because we learn things. I think medical knowledge, it doubles like every five years. It's ridiculous. Um, you know, we learn new things every year, and it's a good point every year for us to sit down and say, hey, this is, this is some of the new stuff that's out there. This is what we're seeing now. These are some of the trends. And to pass that along to you so that you've got some idea on, on you know, how to better live your life. So we know that that all definitely goes under the idea of health as you do it self program and making that time to become informed and educated and basically making that decision to make the change right then and there. And so if you're interested in that as well, you know, there's registration that's now open online that you can get to. And I believe you can get to that from our website, www dot rosellecare.com and are also calling the office and that number again is 703-698-7117 so we'd love to see you there we get to both present and get to be a little bit of a nervous wreck until we get our presentations done so we know what the stress response is like then too so um but back to our main topic autoimmune diseases Tell me a little bit about what what do you think about some of the treatments that our people are using out there now? What are they seeing as far as under the roles of chiropractic care or applied kinesiology and nutrition and the the way we're going about treating it now uh, from a, a naturopathic point of view uh, it, it's having really profound effects. Um, we've seen it with patients. Um, I mean some some really amazing stories where people have had these disease just just immune degenerative diseases for years. Um, constant symptomatology. Uh, they're in constant flare up. It's, you know, they'll have a flare up every week. It'll last several days. If you balance the immune system correctly, you can get that out to where it's, you know, they're having flare ups a couple times a year and it lasts a day because it's understanding what the process is and understanding that immune system and what you can do about it. And you can stop that flare up from happening sometimes and you can get it down if it does happen because life does happen and these you know it's you know it's an ongoing process we have different stressors that come up you know you're it's not like you're never going to fall again and and get hurt but when it does happen you can control it and get it down very very quickly and you know for patients that wake up every morning in pain that's that's a big thing i mean quality of life when we talk about autoimmune disease we're talking about quality of life and, and that's huge well, I know too. A lot of the times, it has to deal it comes down with availability because some people, wherever they are, whether their situation is, they can't get in, and they're looking for you know just that what the medication is going to do for them as far as the pain relief, especially. Um, personal experience with someone that I know that has lupus. You know, they they do a charity event, and at the end of the charity event, they're literally having to be carried out of the car because they're so fatigued. They've put everything they can into it, and there's nothing but rest and you know other kind of looking at the diet for them, getting them recoup. That basically kind of helps them recover. But essentially, they're still going to go back to their doctor, and and the doctor's going to tell them, you know what, this is the only medication that can control these symptoms. This is what we're going to have to do. And unfortunately, it looks like the only thing they can do is really increase every dose when it doesn't seem to work or add right. another one that's very similar to that. 
It's it's yeah. I mean, it's it's sad because, like I said, the only treatment that really comes down to is steroids. Um, I mean, that's honestly that's about it. Um, last ditch, you can do total immune suppression. Um, but you know, at that point, uh, you risk dying of things, you know, like a cold, um, because that's that's your only option. Uh, I'm going to talk about that a lot on well, Wednesday. We're going to talk about the the really what are the mechanics behind, it, and it's really a, a dysregulation. You've got an imbalance of the immune system. You don't have to suppress the whole thing. Uh, if you treat it correctly, you can balance it, and that's really the key piece is finding the balance. The big thing, though, I mean, with autoimmune disease, you know, and I'll go over the ex- when, during the lecture. First thing I'll do with with everybody is go over the expectations of of treatment. Um, it's it's something that's not easy to do. But largely, it's educating the patient because autoimmune patients uh, will typically, very unknowingly, and it's it's very unfortunate, but will typically self-sabotage themselves. Um, you, if you have an autoimmune disease, you don't have a normally working immune system. So everything out there on the market that's available to help increase the immune system is not going to work for you. Um, and you have to be very careful about what, I mean, even simple things that you take when we talk about simple things like green tea or echinacea, um, those can have devastating effects for an autoimmune patient. And that's really the key thing is learning how not to self-sabotage. What are you doing right? What are you doing wrong? Because with lots of these patients, it's what are they doing wrong? Very unknowingly, but what are you doing wrong? What are you accidentally taking or getting into the system? Because you're trying to help keep your immune system boosted up but it's actually hurting you and that's the that's one of the big tricks here with the autoimmune patients is figuring out where's that imbalance gone wrong what can you take what shouldn't you take and really maintaining that that quality of life and you know and the other piece too is figuring out well you know do you have an auto disease an autoimmune disease or not and you know lots of times patients know they have this disease but they don't realize it's autoimmune how much of it genetics really plays into a factor of this? Because we, you know, we talk a lot about our environmental exposures and, you know, when we look at the lab works and, and we look at see what's coming up and what may or may not show this, that we have an autoimmune disease. But how much do you see genetics really playing into it? Because obviously, as much as you change your diet and lifestyle and, and come in for treatments and stuff, if there's a huge genetic imp- component, you can change a certain portion of that. But then you're also thinking about, well, what about the next generation of my family? What's the concerns that they're going to run into? Right. I mean, g- genetics do play. I mean, genetics certainly do play a big role in this. Okay, and you can't you can't alter genetics if you. And, but what we know now, and after we did the whole human genome project, you know the, the thing that we know now is that it doesn't matter so much if you have the gene. It, it's more important whether or not it gets expressed. So, you know, I liken this sometimes. Uh, the example I like to give is an alcoholic. Okay, if you've got the gene for alcoholism, but you never drink, you're never going to have expression of that gene, and it's not problematic for you. But then as soon as you start drinking and you get you get expression of that gene, well, now now we're an alcoholic and we have a problem. Um, the same thing is true for autoimmune disease. You take something like uh, Hashimoto's, uh, there's there's a gene, uh, HLA-DQ2, okay? And there's another one, DQ8, but we'll talk about DQ2. Um, that is a gene that holds Hashimoto's disease and celiac disease, pernicious anemia, which is autoimmune uh, where you uh, autoimmune anemia type of disease, something called GAD65, which is the type 1 diabetes, or in some patients, uh, type 2 diabetes, just misdiagnosed, um, anti-cerebellum antibodies in the brain. Those are all within that same gene. So if you get expression of the gene, well, then you can get expression of some of those diseases. And that's the other thing that a lot of patients don't understand is they typically just don't have one autoimmune disease. It's not uncommon to see other diseases start to pop up, but a lot of times they're kind of swept under the rug or they're not really looked for because now we already have a culprit. And once we have, we have a diagnosis, so we're going to treat that, and that's it. That's just the wrong way to look at it. You've got to figure out, well, what other tissues might be getting attacked here. The, the, The silver lining to that is if you treat it correctly, and what I mean by that is go about balancing the immune system, you're going to treat all those different diseases the same way but you just got to treat it the right way. Yeah, you do see that crossover quite a bit, and whether one promotes, like, kind of which one comes first. Sometimes is it the chicken or the egg? Is it is it 
that someone had rheumatic, uh, you know, arthritis first, or are they having problems with skin issues first? Or there's a lot of different ways of treating it. So when it really comes down to treatment, is this individualization? Right. And, and coming back to the genetics portion of it, I mean, that's where it's well, have you had gene expression? Well, you, you want to stop expressing that gene, okay? If, if it's happened. So that's where we come back to talking about, well, how did this happen in the first place? If you've got chronic leaky gut or you've got chronic uh, immune infections, if you've got chronic exposures to something, you want to shut the valve off and figure out, well, you know, where's the, where's the problem coming in as soon as possible? That way you don't risk picking up multiple other immune diseases at the same time. Because we also see, I know when I've I've talked about people coming in too, I mean, it tends to be that people who either are diagnosed with autoimmune disease or they have autoimmune type symptoms, they're not typically the children coming in. You know, the children coming in or you're seeing more of the allergies and the eczema and asthma and stuff coming in and then all of a sudden that seems to go away. So it's like their immune system just boosted up. But then all of a sudden they're coming back and maybe during their middle of the cycle you're seeing more growth issues or like with especially with girls, like period issues and, and cramping and stuff. And then later on in their life, when they start to get closer to like menopause and middle age, now you're starting to see more of these start to flare. So it is that like accumulation over years that things are starting to happen and really. Right. Yeah. You see, you know, we see these diseases a lot of times very early on and we get it like type one diabetes when we get a die. Okay. Type one diabetes, just take insulin. The problem with that. You know, just like with what you're talking about, is it comes down to we're not treating patients correctly, and it's all based off of symptomatology. Well, your menstrual cycle is a little off. We'll put you on birth control. Uh, you're just you're you're just managing the symptomatology, and you're not looking at well, is there a causative agent behind this? Um, and when you've got you know, I'll tell you what, the, the simplest thing when a patient comes in, well, is there autoimmune going on here or not? You know, the easiest thing is well, what's your family history? Do you have any history of type 1 diabetes? Do you have any history of thyroid problems? Do you have any history of any kind of autoimmune diseases like MS or lupus or rheumatoid arthritis? Because there is that genetic component. So let's not cover it up and just treat the symptomatology. You know, if it is an immune system problem, let's go and let's fix that. All right, welcome back. We're here in studio finishing up talking about autoimmune disease. Dr. Pro, why don't you tell everyone what you're going to be focusing in on the lecture on Wednesday, May the 30th at the Roselle Center for Healing? Well, first we're going to talk about, you know, what are some of the autoimmune diseases? Because, like I said, a lot of times patients have these diseases, but they don't really realize that this is autoimmune. Um, they just talk about the destruction that's going on. I have RA, and that's a joint problem, so I know I have joint pain. But they don't really understand that, well, this is you have joint pain because your immune system is attacking the joint. Um, because, like I said, the biggest thing is figuring out the prevention behind it. Um, you know, what got you there? Is it a continual exposure and turning it off? So we're going to talk about a lot of different diseases. And, um, you know, that's something that always, I, I think, always shocks patients that, oh, what, this is autoimmune. You know, you just don't really realize that. Um, you know, there's a chance that my hypothyroidism is, is really autoimmune. They just, you know, they're not given that information before. So we'll talk about what are some of these diseases that are out there. And, um, what are the ones, and it's it's funny because you always have that list of, we know these things are autoimmune, and then you always have this huge list of possible or probable, you know, autoimmune connection, and there's, you know, like 100 million different diseases that are probable. Uh, it's, it's always funny to see those lists. But basically, you know, we're going to talk about, I mean, autoimmune disease is a disease of inflammation. It's, it's a problem with the immune system, and we'll break down, you know, real simply, uh, I, I won't get, you know, sometimes I get a little too, professorish but we'll break it down real simple into how does it happen where's the dysregulation in the immune system how does it get dysregulated how does it get off balance and then you know really the big thing is what can you do to treat it on a daily basis because there's like i said it, it's two parts it's what can you do but also what you shouldn't do and the what you shouldn't do here in in, in this regard is almost more important for some patients um, then what do you need to do every day? It's what are you doing wrong? And, you know, lots of times by accident, but what are you doing wrong on a daily basis? What are you, you know, what's, what are you doing that's keeping you in that flare up or that keeps bringing that flare up back? So that's a, a big piece of it. But we're going to make it simple. We're going to try to make it as fun as possible because it's not a very fun topic. Um, but it is a very interesting topic, especially if you know that you've got this strange disease, this strange problem. You're constantly inflamed. You're constantly in flare up. Um, and the only medication that you've been given 
giving us steroids. You know, what else can you really do to, to get a handle on this thing? Well, one of the interesting things I think also about autoimmune diseases is that you're seeing more and more awareness of it out there too. There's more, uh, you know, whether it comes down to charity events or walks or different, different types of events that are going on, there's much more awareness on there where the, the people that are suffering from different autoimmune diseases are, are coming together to really help support themselves. So this would actually also be a great lecture for anyone who's in some kind of support group to really bring the people with them and so they can help share some of the information and learn what else is out there as well. Yeah, we see a lot of, you know, lupus walks, you know, Sjogren walk. I mean, we, we, we see a lot of the, the charity events around this because they're lifetime diseases. They're mm-hmm. things that you, you don't ever get rid of. You know, the big thing we talk about here is quality of life. I mean, that is the biggest thing. You can maintain and keep your quality of life. It's just a matter of really treating the disease correctly. And by that, I mean actually treating the immune system, not just the inflammatory effects that it's having on the tissue itself. So you can get really amazing results with this. Uh, Patients are are always surprised by it, but it it doesn't have to destroy and, and ruin your life. And there is a greater awareness out there. There's so much more you can do, and, and that's what we're really going to try to pass on to people. Well, there's a lot of great information that's going to be presented on Wednesday, May the 30th at 7.30 p.m. at the Rizal Center for Healing. We can have you call up and register uh, to make sure you save a spot for this one. And again, that number is 703-698-7117. And as always, the Dr. Dr. Tom Rizal Live Show is here to give you information about natural health and wellness, different things you can do to protect and prevent um, other healthcare issues in your life and giving you those choices so that you can make the best decision possibly. Any last minute, uh, last minute things you want to add in there? We know we were all oh. looking forward to seeing Dr. Tom come back and he'll be back next week too as well. So probably, probably, More than, uh, or yeah, else he we'll be, be back. He on. should be back next week <laughs> for, uh, for everybody out there. Well, otherwise, we thanks for having us. And essentially what we're going to do is hopefully we'll see you not only at the lectures, but also at Ageless Health um, 2010. So have a good Sunday, and we'll talk with you later.